I've been a lifelong fan of Eric Clapton. And as somebody who is a big fan of Eric Clapton's music, I like to think that I have a pretty good sense of the songs that he's played on, the albums that he's recorded. However, there is one album that Eric Clapton released that I'm aware of that was an alias album where he took no credit for playing on the album or any of the production. And it was unlike anything that you've ever heard from Eric Clapton if you're a fan like me. Now, the way I was introduced to this album is one of my father's colleagues had a husband that was a extremely huge Eric Clapton fan. And he heard about this album called Retail Therapy by the band TDF. And it had sort of this obscure look, kind of like bubble graffiti uh, text on everything. And then inside the album cover had people wearing sort of like space suits with motorcycle helmets. Nothing to indicate at all that Eric Clapton had anything to do with it, but I guess amongst the biggest fans of Eric Clapton who, you know, were on the underground level, they were aware that he played on this. My dad picked up the CD, and I have been listening to this album ever since it's come out in the late 90s. Now, this album is incredibly rare. It is not available on Spotify. It is not available on iTunes. The only place I was actually able to find any of the songs off the album was something that's clearly been pirated and put on YouTube as an MP3. And there's a playlist that I'll link that's been on YouTube for several years that will at least allow you to hear some of the songs that are on the actual album. There is a lot of like dance related, dance hall type music. And then there's stuff that's kind of like slower R&B that's maybe more reminiscent of what you would hear from Sade or somebody like that. So first we're gonna hear a song off that album. It's a song called Sienna. And I'm gonna bring in my friend Tim Marco today. And he's gonna be playing all the examples of some of the different albums that we're talking about that are sort of alias albums, as well as some of the hit songs and scoring that Eric Clapton did. Presumably he was using something similar to what I have in my hand and Eric Clapton Stratocaster with Lace Sensors. I'm going to be adding a little bit of reverb and delay from a Source Audio Collider that's going to come after the microphone on my Soldano SLO 100. Now, I don't know what amp Eric Clapton was using at this time. This, again, was in the late 90s. It could have been a Marshall. He did use a Soldano in the later part of the 80s and earlier part of the 90s. I'm not sure, but I try to dial in the tone the best I could. All the distortion is coming from the built-in TBX tone circuit and overdrive that's inside of the actual Clapton Strat itself. So all the gain is coming from here or the Soldano SLO. Let's have a listen. The next song I think is probably the vibiest and most R&B like that is on the entire album. I, I don't know on this whether the background vocals that you hear uh, on this example are from Tony Rich or are from Babyface. Most people agree that it's likely Tony Rich, although I know that Babyface was a heavy collaborator in this particular era of Eric Clapton's music. So I suppose it could be him as well, but I'll let you be the judge. You can throw something in the comments if you have more information about the recording. But again, this is probably the, the vibiest R&B kind of sound of the whole entire album. Again, pretty diverse and different than anything that we've heard from Eric Clapton, but some really beautiful soloing that he does over the top of it. And uh, I'll let you have a listen. This is a song called Give Her What She Wants.
But outside of TDF, there are other Eric Clapton scores and songs that people just aren't quite aware of that he was either involved with or was the direct producer and creator of the music. And one of those songs is actually a Beatles song. And I'm sure that diehard Beatles fans know this, but people from my generation often have no idea about this collaboration that Eric Clapton actually played on the song While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And it's one of the most iconic guitar tones and solos on any Beatles album ever written. So I'm gonna pull a little piece of an isolated backing track from the original song While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And then Tim is gonna do a little arrangement of the Eric Clapton part, kind of mixing between some of the lead sounds and some of the rhythm sounds. We're gonna have on a little bit of a Deja vibe from full tone to kind of get a little bit more of that Leslie sort of sound. It's still gonna be going through the Soldano. You're still gonna be hearing everything distortion wise in front of the amp from the guitar itself and the built-in tone and distortion circuit, as well as any of the overdrive that's on the amp, kind of set to a mid-gain tone on the Soldano SLO. Let's have a little listen to the Beatles song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And again, the guitar parts being played by Eric Clapton. One other piece that I think is also really important and is widely unknown as far as the Eric Clapton legacy and discography, which is Eric Clapton scored one of the most famous action films of the 1980s, which was Lethal Weapon. And there are some very, very amazing guitar parts where Eric Clapton and David Sanborn on saxophone are kind of trading off licks back and forth. They kind of create the mood of this Vietnam veteran turned cop who has uh, been suffering from depression and the character being Mel Gibson and his name is Martin Riggs. And there is a song that I think very well encapsulates the guitar tone and the vibe of the entire movie, which is a song called Meet Martin Riggs. And there's sort of an acoustic pad that goes underneath an electric guitar melody. So we're gonna recreate those two parts using a Gibson electric guitar, a steel string in this case, it sounds like there's probably a nylon string used on the actual album. And then using the Eric Clapton Strat, presumably he was using something close to this or maybe a prototype of this by the time that Lethal Weapon was recorded, probably sometime in the early to mid eighties. The rig that we're gonna use again is exactly the same and probably closest to what Eric would have used in that time. So let's have a little listen to Meet Martin Riggs again, coming from the Lethal Weapon soundtrack, which was scored by David Sanborn and Eric Clapton. Thank you. 
So those were two other examples of places where maybe some of you knew in the example of the Beatles and in Lethal Weapon that Eric Clapton was involved either in the scoring of or in the solo guitar sections of, of those songs. But nevertheless, I think that there are some pretty amazing undiscovered pieces that Eric Clapton has been a part of, especially as it relates to the TDF album. So I'd love to hear from you if there's examples of songs where Eric Clapton has uh, maybe another alias album that I'm not aware of, or if there's other collaborations that he did that are not widely known about that we could maybe compile a list of in the comments section if you're aware of any. And if you want to support what we're doing, the easiest way to do that is, again, to like, subscribe, leave us a comment. All that's free. Another free way to continue to support us is head over to our podcast that we do every week with me, Grant Klassen from Goodwood Audio, and Brian O'Million from O'Million Audio. We have a roundtable discussion about gear, pedal boards, and best practices. It's called The Chairman of the Boards. It airs every Monday. We also have a live stream that we do of it every Monday as well on YouTube. Or if you want to support us further, you can head over to vertexeffects.com. We have all of our pedals listed, all of our dealers listed that sell our pedals and pedal boards, all available there on the website. And also we offer tone consultations through our Rig Doctor website, therigdr.com, and you're able to figure out whatever's wrong with your pedal board or what steps you need to take in order to improve your sound and improve your rig. So until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, a.k.a. The Rig Doctor. Thank you again to Tim Marco for playing those amazing Eric Clapton tunes. And also thank you for watching and getting to learn a little bit more and explore with me about TDF, about Eric Clapton's uh, influence and some of his collaboration with the Beatles and also his work on the Lethal Weapon soundtrack. I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.